So now let's talk about a slightly different issue, which is what we should do about test coverage for concurrent software. Now in general in this class, we haven't been dealing at all with testing of concurrent code. And that's mainly because it's a difficult and specialized skill. Let's talk briefly about what coverage of concurrent software would actually mean. First of all, hopefully it's clear that while applying sequential code coverage metrics to concurrent software is a fine idea, probably these aren't going to give us any confidence that the code lacks concurrency errors such as race conditions and deadlocks. So let's talk about how we would figure out if we've done a good job testing concurrent software. So let's take, for example, this function, xfer, which transfers some amount of money between bank account one and bank account two. This particular function is designed to be called from different threads. So what I've done here is marked A1 and A2 in red, and these variables are representing the different bank accounts, and they're in red in order to indicate that these are shared between different calls to XFER. And so the transfer function is going to be called from one thread, so some thread is going to transfer money between accounts, and then also several other threads are going to do the same thing. So what we have is multiple threads calling this transfer function, and as long as the threads are moving money between different accounts, probably everything's all right. On the other hand, since the transfer function has not synchronized, that is, it hasn't taken any sort of a lock while it manipulates the accounts, if these threads are operating on the same accounts concurrently, then there's going to be a problem. We're going to mess up the balances of the accounts that are involved. And so now we ask the question, what sort of coverage would we be looking for while testing this function in order to detect this kind of bug? And the answer is some sort of a coverage metric to make sure that threads T1 and T2 both call this function at the same time while transferring our money between the same accounts. So the coverage would essentially be T1 gets partway into the function, and then let's say it stops running. The processor then starts to run T2, which operates on the accounts, and then completes. And then this interleaving of actions between the different threads would be what would constitute a unit of test coverage. So that is to say, we'd want to make sure we tested the case where the transfer account is concurrently called. So that's one kind of coverage that we might look for when testing concurrent software.